Hi everyone and welcome to the start of a brand new series covering lighting. Now lighting is a weird topic because it's going to vary game to game and uh, person to person. So what we'll be aiming to do over these next series of videos is showing you the basics leading up to more advanced stuff. But covering things in more of a general terms, covering what the settings do, how they affect the lighting inside your world. So then you know how to uh, manipulate the settings to match what you want to do. And now a lot of it is trial and error, so don't worry if you don't get it straight away. It's just a matter of finding the figures that work best to what your style is. So in this video, we're going to start things off by looking at how do we do illumination inside of an interior scene. So I've got this environment set up, and we'll be using this over this next series of videos. So we've got an exterior scene, um, an enclosed interior scene, and an interior scene with a portal, uh, in this case a window. So we'll be using this scene, the dark room here, to show you how to illuminate it using indirect lighting. So let's go look in there now. And immediately you can see how lighting is slowly getting brighter the longer we stay in there. This is because of auto exposure. Auto exposure is the tool that mimics what your eyeball does in real life. You probably have done experience before when you go into a dark room, immediately you can't see nothing. But after a amount of time, your eyeball will slowly adjust to the darkness in the room and you'll be able to see. This is what that is replicating. So what we're gonna do is uh, but show you how to turn it off and also to adjust the preview of your scene so you can get a more um, it helps you work towards your lighting a lot better so if you want to turn it off completely you go to edit project settings and just search for auto exposure and you'll find it's a tick box you just untick it okay so if I go there now you can see the room doesn't get brighter okay it just stays like this next if we, the other option, sorry, um, if we go back and turn it back on. And then you can see it working again. But if I go to my lit option at the top here and change it down the bottom to exposure, untick game settings, and then you've got this preview setting here. And this allows you to set the exposure of the camera. So one, basically, it's not really exposed at all. But then you can overexpose it and underexpose it okay so you can see how you can affect lightness and brightness and if I go outside you'll notice this even more okay so overexposure or underexposure but we're going to take game settings and I'm going to turn auto exposure off Okay, so now we've got a dark scene. Now you do see a little bit of bleeding of light coming from the outside. We'll cover that in a lot more detail in the next episode when we talk about light maps. Um, but for now, don't worry too much about this as we're just focusing entirely on lighting up this scene in, in the interior. So let's crack on with this. Now to light this scene, we can typically going to use uh, what we call spotlights. So if I go to my light section in my actors window here, you can see spotlight. You want to drag that into your world and place it wherever you want your lights to be. Now, normally in an interior scene, you'll have a light source, which will be like a light bulb or a lamp or something like that. And you'll place these light sources uh, here to match where the mesh, those meshes are. And you place them and orientate them and size them based on the actual mesh. Uh, we don't have meshes in here, we just have empty space. But it doesn't really matter, we just put these in here like so. Now, the spotlight has several options. Um, the main thing we're going to do here uh, to maximize the lighting of our part of the room is we're going to go down to the details panel and change the outer cone angle to as high as it can be so it goes out flat pretty much almost along the whole entire space next we're going to tweak the inner cone angle and the inner cone angle will give us more of that spotlight feeling so you just, these are the numbers that you just tweak as you wish um, so we've got that there and let's just move that aside here and I'm going to leave that as is I'm gonna, I will eventually put another one in here but we're going to leave it as just one for now whilst we show you some other stuff now immediately you can see I have to rebuild the lighting this is because this is by default set as a stationary light actor 
Now, a stationary light actor means that it bakes the lighting into the scene, but you can still change the color um, and some other minor settings as well in runtime. What is generally best is most of your lights should be static. Static ones are free to use. They're not going to add any extra computational power, not change anything, no lag. It's not going to do anything like that because it's all baked before the game is compiled in runtime or, in, or not running in runtime, sorry. So by all means, you can have as many static lights as you can want. Stationary lights, you do have some limitations and movable lights, you definitely have uh, limitations on it. So we'll make this one static and then I'm going to rebuild the lighting. Now, what happens when you rebuild lighting? Uh, by the way, to rebuild, you go to build options and build lighting only. Um, you may want to make sure your lighting quality here is set to preview whilst you're working on it. And let's go build lighting only. So what is building lighting? So the way it does it is what we call baking. So what it's doing is taking a look at the light and shadows and baking those shadows and highlights into the texture. So that build data is then stored and saved so it can be called up when it's rendering the scene out. Uh, that's why it's 3D used because you're baking it into the actual texture. So now you can see the light has lit some of the space of the room up fine. Okay, so we've got a bit of a light source here bouncing around a little bit here and so forth. But it's not really bouncing around much. That's because indirect lighting hasn't been increased or uh, improved upon. So with it selected, if I go down to bottom in its light settings, you'll see indirect lighting intensity. And by default, it's set to one. We can increase this value and you'll see the light bounce around a bit more. Most notably, you'll notice it a lot more on the ceiling. So the ceiling at the moment is pretty much pitch black. But if we change the indirect lighting here to three, for example, and then click build lighting again. It's important to note as well that with the build lighting, it can take a long time if you've got a lot of objects. So be wary of that. So now light mass, uh, the light mass has said indirect lighting should be bouncing around. So now you've got more illumination on these walls and you should get some more in the ceiling. If not, we have to increase a bit more. Yeah, you can see a bit of the color. You see a bit more of the dark blue. I don't know it's coming up on your screen, but it's there. Um, but if we increase that value again, we can go up to like eight, for example, and build the lighting again. We should start seeing more of that color bouncing around. Now, what indirect intensity here does is it changes the bouncing of the light intensity, but doesn't actually affect the actual light inside the cone, the direct light, at all. Okay, it just affects the how uh, uh, how bright the bounces are. And now you can see clearly the ceiling is now fully lit you can see the actual color compared to this floor it's the same thing same object so it should match it and you can see it working there okay so there we have the simple illumination of the scene now as i say you can normally have multiple of these inside the room so let's drag another one out i'm going to hold down alt and then shift to move the camera along with it to the other side of the room and again we're going to build the lighting to show uh, the room in all its glory. Okay, so now we've got an interior room set up and is now bouncing light around for that indirect lighting illumination. So that's pretty much it. Um, there is other things we can do with post-processing, but we'll do it in another video. Um, but for now, that will do for this video. If you like this video and you want to see more, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lilly where your support can help me out greatly and for you in return you get access to loads of videos before anyone else, access to the Discord and many other benefits such as project files and voting privileges on future content. Thank you again for watching my video and if you haven't yet subscribed to, to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below in the box if you want to see uh, what, about what videos you want to see in the future. I'm always interested to see what people would like to see coming out on my channel. So thanks again and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.